State Senator from Buford County, but I have a passion for the state of South Carolina as a whole. I just don't represent Buford, I represent all the state. And I've been fortunate enough not to have uh, a primary or a general election challenge this time around, so I've been able to go around the state and to talk about what I think we need to do in South Carolina in the 2013 legislative session. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the specific uh, reforms that I think are necessary. But before I talk about what's necessary in South Carolina, um, I've, I've taken to describing as a backdrop what I think is a very perilous situation in Washington, D.C., and you're going to hear more about that from my good friend uh, Mick Mulvaney, who for my money is absolutely the best congressman um, in the United States Congress, and you have a real treat to talk to him. Um, you all know the numbers, uh, $16 trillion debt, uh, absolutely staggering. Uh, three years in a row of trillion dollar plus deficits to add to that debt. We haven't had a budget now passed in what, over three years, Mick? Is that what it's been? That, three years, no budget whatsoever. Can you imagine a household trying to run your affairs uh, without a budget? Um, well, that's what we have in Washington, D.C. Uh, skyrocketing entitlements. I don't see any uh, appetite up there really to do some meaningful reform um, to Medicare. Uh, and Medicaid uh, and those things that are really hollowing us out in terms of our debt. And, and then I look at what in recent months that the Federal Reserve has done in order to pay our national debt, in order to prop up entitlement spending, in order to allow the profligate Congress to keep functioning, is that they print money and they use that money that's printed to buy Treasury securities through primary dealers and that money is then used to pay our debt. We have tripled our monetary base in the last three years. I mean, we have gone ahead and tripled the amount of money um, that is held as reserves or is in circulation, and it is absolutely frightening to me um, that that is the way we're handling our national affairs. So it's bad enough that we have a $16 trillion debt. It's bad enough that we have three consecutive years of trillion-dollar-plus deficits. Bad enough that we haven't passed a budget in three years, but we're paying for this entitlement spending and paying for this increasing uh, amounting debt by printing money which of course dilutes all of our savings. So I say all that to say this, I think there's gonna come a time and not the too distant future when states are going to have to do a lot more for those citizens with a lot less from the federal government. I think it's just an empirical fact that at some point in time, the amount of money that Washington sends down to the states for Medicaid, which is health care for the poor in South Carolina, or for highways or for education, of necessity, that money will not be coming down any longer to the states. And those states that take steps right now, and those states that recognize that they're going to have to do more with less in the not-too-distant future are going to be the states that prosper. And I want South Carolina to be one of those states. Now, there are the, some states that, that are simply, I think, so far gone. California, Illinois, New York, I mean, they have structural debt problems, entitlement problems, undefined liability problems, that I think there's going to be a dramatic um, upheaval in those states. And those that are creating wealth, those that are creating jobs, those that are energetic are going to be looking for states. They're going to look for a place where they can raise their families and invest their capital and start businesses. And again, I want South Carolina to be that place. I want South Carolina to occur to them like, let's go to South Carolina because that's a state that has a small government. That's a state that respects the free market. That's a state that doesn't play favorites. That's a state that really recognizes that entrepreneurs drive growth. And so what do we do in South Carolina to make us that state, to make us what I call and what my friends at the South Carolina Policy Council call the freest state in the, in the nation? How can we have that reputation? Well, I think it starts with reforming our tax code. Not all taxes are equal when it comes to impacting our economy. The most damaging tax is a tax on wealth creation or tax on entrepreneurs or the income tax. And we effectively have the highest top marginal income tax rate in the nation. 7% top marginal income tax rate that kicks in at $14,000. That's going to discourage entrepreneurs. We also have the highest industrial manufacturing property taxes in the nation at 10.5% assessment ratio. So if you're somebody in California or Illinois or New York or some other state and you're looking for a place to take your capital and your family and your business, you're not going to come to South Carolina, which has a very punitive income tax and a very punitive property tax because that drives away entrepreneurs and drives away capital investment. Now, where we have holes in our tax code in South Carolina is with the third form of taxation. We've got the income tax, property tax, and then you have a sales tax or a consumption tax. We have a tax code in South Carolina that has over 100 special exemptions that lobbyists have gotten for their clients 
over the last several decades. We're at a point now where we exempt more in sales taxes than we collect. We exempted $2.7 billion worth of sales taxes last year and collected $2.1 billion. What we need to do to make South Carolina the freest state in the nation, where taxes are low for everybody, is sunset those special exemptions and then take that revenue and use it to reduce the property taxes across the board, especially for industrial manufacturing and commercial property, reduce that top marginal income tax rate from 7% down to something much, much lower. Because you look at the states that have prospered, Florida and Texas, they have no income tax. Become that state where entrepreneurs automatically think of as being a state that welcomes entrepreneurs and capital. We don't have that right now in South Carolina, not only because of our tax code, which I've just described to you, but for the last 14 years in South Carolina, we have had an economy that is primarily directed by politicians. 14 years ago, in 1998, we gave away $34 million in targeted subsidies or grants or special exemptions to certain corporations to try to get them to come down here, $34 million. Last year, it was over $1 billion that we gave away. We're never going to get ahead as a state, and we're never going to be known as the freest state that recognizes the free market if we continually have an economic model loading up our sleigh and going up there and trying to entice corporations to come here by giving them income tax breaks and sales tax breaks and property tax breaks. Because guess what? The more you do that and the more you let those tax breaks be given away to those who have lobbyists or connections, everybody else pays higher. There's a reason why you're paying the top highest marginal income tax rate effectively in the nation. There's a reason why your property taxes are so high. There's a reason why you don't have the special sales tax exemptions that the large companies do. And that drives the costs up for everybody. So sure, I mean, if you're a Boeing or a BMW or a Michelin, you can come into South Carolina and you can negotiate a deal where you don't have to pay the income tax. Or you negotiate a deal with a county for a fee in lieu of taxation agreement where you pay lower property taxes. Or you can negotiate a deal whereby you get an exemption from your sales tax. And, and look, in some circumstances, I understand where people are coming from because these are great companies. But that's not the way to grow your economy. That's not the, way, that's not the reason why South Carolina has got one of the highest unemployment rates in the nation and we're only paying those jobs, the, the, those that do have jobs, are only getting 82% per capita of the national average. We have tried this for 14 years. And if you look over 14 years, as state subsidies and politicians directing the economy has grown, you have seen our per capita income go down, and you've seen our unemployment go up. So what we need to do in this window of opportunity that we have, and before everything goes south up in Washington, D.C., and I'll let Mick talk a little bit more about that, because despite the best efforts of people like Mick, I really don't have faith in Washington, D.C.'s ability to get their act together. And in any event, my job as a state legislator is to make sure that South Carolina is able to handle the needs of its citizens if and when that day comes when Washington has to disconnect the umbilical cord. And I want South Carolina to be a place where individuals look to come because we're a welcoming environment for entrepreneurs. We don't have that right now. We've got a limited amount of time. We can reform our tax code. We can adopt the Economic Incentive Transparency Act, which says that if you want to give away incentives, if you want to give away grants or subsidies, that's fine. But be transparent about who you're giving it away to, what economic studies show the benefits are. That's before the fact. And then after the fact, make an accounting back to the taxpayers, much like a corporation gives an accounting back to shareholders as to what did you get for your money? What sort of return did you get? Right now, there's opaqueness. You, you don't know exactly what incentives are being given away, and you have no idea what benefits you got. And if, if politicians in Columbia want to act like investment brokers, they ought to have the same regulations put on them and have due diligence on the front end and accountability on the back end. So from my standpoint, I'm like the rest of you. I get frustrated with Washington, D.C., both parties. Both parties, I get frustrated with them. Um, and the sense I get is that corruption or cronyism is so endemic up there, or so ingrained in lifestyle up there, that I think we're in for a reckoning. I want to get South Carolina's house in order. I want to pay down our debt. I want our, fund, our unfunded liabilities. I want to curb our entitlements. I want to get our tax code so it welcomes entrepreneurs and capital investment. And I want to go ahead and have transparency when it comes to these incentives, because going from $34 million a year in special breaks 14 years ago to over a billion dollars of your money now every year going out with no transparency isn't the way to run a state. It doesn't make us the freest state in the nation. So those are my goals going forward. Um, I have ultimate faith in people like Mick to fight the battle up in Washington, D.C., but I've got a job here as a state legislator as well to get us ready.